Hello. Today will be a short study and teaching on defending the uh, position of musical instruments in worship to the Lord. This is not the complete apology of, uh, of uh, instrumental use of music, but it is a uh, part of the uh, apology that we that believe that musical instruments are allowed and not prohibited this is one of the arguments that we make sadly most Christians in the church today that use musical instruments in worship are not able to defend their position from the from the scriptures properly and maybe today's uh, study will help you if you have trouble doing that Let's imagine that you were a Bible student 500 years from now and you were doing a study on Christians and the partaking of wine in the New Testament. Your, your objective was to find out what the position the Bible has on Christians and the drinking or the partaking of wine. Now, if you looked in your Bible, you would find you would find a common phrase in the New Testament that spoke of not being given to wine, not being given to much wine. And if you looked up the definition of those that phrase, you would find, maybe surprisingly, that those words mean, and that word not given to or not given to much, has the idea everywhere it's used in the New Testament of not being addicted to wine, not becoming a servant of wine, not letting wine bring you into bondage, not waking up with wine on your mind all the time. When you look at the uh, terminology of not giving too much wine in the New Testament, it always has that in mind, not being addicted to. In other words, nowhere... In the New Testament, would you find that the Bible prohibits Christians partaking or drinking of any wine? However, you would find that the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testaments, always condemns addiction to wine and drunkenness to wine. However, if you looked back in history and you looked from the period of 1920, to 2020, you would find something that may be very surprising to you. You would find the common doctrine of the church during that time was the total abstinence from wine. And you would be looking at the definition you found in your study that came from the Bible that talked about the not giving too much wine, meaning not being addicted to wine you would find that the Bible never condemns the mere partaking of wine. However, when you look back in history, you would find a group of Christians always prohibiting any amount of wine being partaken of. And at that point, you would be scratching your head and wondering what's going on, and you would wonder, maybe, had the definition of not partaken or not being given to much wine changed during that time period? And at that moment, at that time, you would have to come to some kind of conclusion. You would have to either conclude that the meaning of not given to wine changed during that time period to mean total abstinence from or you would have to conclude what the Bible does about the teaching of wine, that the Bible never, never condemned the mere partaking of wine. Now, if you came to the conclusion of the Bible, you would be right, and at that point you would have to figure out why the attitude in the church during that time period suddenly changed and it seemed like the Christians during that time they had the new same New Testament that you had however 
their conclusions were a different conclusion than you arrived at. Their conclusion, in fact, was that God did not allow any partaking of wine. And if you did a historical study of that time period, you would find that the um, that time period, 1920 to 2020, coincided with what was called prohibition. Now, I've said that to say this. Those that would exclude musical instruments in the worship of the Lord today make the same argument that the meaning of the word psalms has changed over a time period. And when you looked in history, you would find that to a large extent, no musical instruments were used in the early church, especially during the first 100 to 300 years. Now, you would have to come to the same conclusion that you would with the study of wine and the not being given to wine. You would have a choice to make. You would have to come to a conclusion about what the word Psalms means. So today, we want to look at what we would call exclusion defines Psalms as. And we're going to look at what the Bible defines Psalms as. Now, the word Psalms appears both in the Old and the New Testaments. Let me go ahead and give you Strong's definition from both the Old and the New Testaments before we continue any farther. In the Old Testament, the Strong's definition is number 2167, and it is defined as to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument. That's the Old Testament. Now, let's look in the New Testament. Actually, uh, the word Psalms appears three different places in the uh, in the uh, in the New Testament. Actually, these uh, these uh, verses, these uh, books of the Bible, are used by exclusion to uh, to prove. The uh, doctrine of no musical instruments in the Bible. I'm sure that the word Psalms appears more than that, but today we'll just give you a, a couple of books from the Bible, maybe three. First is Ephesians chapter 5. The word Psalms appears there in verse 19. And then if we look in Colossians chapter 3, let's look there real quick. I hope you have your Bible with you. Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 16, we have the word psalms as well as hymns and spiritual songs there. And uh, lastly, but not, uh, not lastly, but lastly in our study today, the last book that we're going to talk about is the book of James. Let's turn there real quickly. After the book of Hebrews, you have the book of James chapter 5. And verse, let's see here, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Now, they were told to sing, but they were told here what to sing. And it was psalms that they were supposed to sing. The main argument, the main verse or scripture that I've used, exclusion use, comes from Ephesians 5.19. Let's go ahead and read that verse while we're talking about it. Ephesians 5.19. And here's what it says. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, we're not going to go over all the, the uh, pro-instrumental music arguments today. We simply don't have the time. The, what we want to talk to today is the definition of the word Psalms. Has the definition changed? And if so, who changed the definition? That's the question that we want to ask. Now, exclusion says, yes, definitely, the word Psalms over a period of time has changed and it has changed to be defined as to sing 
with focal music only. In other words, a cappella only, no musical instruments. Now, we looked at the definition of the word psalms in the Old Testament. Now let's look at the definition of the word psalms in the New Testament. It's actually, there's actually two different definitions. In the, the books of Ephesians and Colossians, it is Strong's number 5568, and it is defined as a sacred ode accompanied with voice, harp, or other instrument. So the definition includes the voice, the harp, or any other instrument that can be used in a psalm. Now, in the book of James, the word psalms is defined actually as a verb. It is in Strong's number 5567. It is the word solo, P-S-A-L-L-O, and it means to twitch or twang, to play on a stringed instrument. Also, in Ephesians 5.19, the word melody is defined this same way, solo. And, by the way, if you, if you go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, you have the word sing appearing twice in this verse. And it is defined both times as the word solo, to twitch or twang to play on a musical instrument. So actually sing in that verse is defined as a verb. Now, we have found out that the word Psalms, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, have exactly the same meaning. Now, what does that mean? What that means is, and if you look in, in a Strong's Concordance, you will notice beside the word it says transliterated. Trans means across, literal, literated means literal. It was brought across in a literal fashion without changing its meaning. Trans, a transliterated word means that it is defined the same both in the Old and the New Testaments. The meaning has not changed. Another word that is transliterated is the word baptize. It always means to immerse. It means that both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we have found, in fact, what our Bible student would find if he was doing a Bible study on, the, on musical instruments in worship 500 years from now. He would find exactly what we are finding, the same definitions. Now, we know that God and the Holy Spirit did not change the word Psalms. We look in 2013 in a Bible dictionary and the word Psalms in the New Testament is defined to mean exactly the same as it did in the Old Testament. It always allows the use of a musical instrument. It never prohibits psalms to vocal or voice only. It always allows. It allows either or all in a psalm. In other words, you can sing a psalm without musical accompaniment if you want to, or you can sing a psalm with musical instruments if you want to. So, who changed the definition of Psalms. Well, it wasn't God, it wasn't the Holy Spirit, so it had to be man that has changed the word, the definition for the word Psalms. So today I would urge you to do your Bible study and look at these words and if they are defined a certain way, accept the definition that the Holy Spirit gave for these words. And do not seek to change the definition of these words. Whether we're talking about 
not given to wine or not given to much wine or whether we're talking about the singing of psalms in the New Testament. Let's let the Bible say what the Bible wants to say. Now when we look back in history, it would seem that that Christians redefined the definition of psalms to mean something else. Now, if you do an in-depth study, you will find out why Christians did not use instruments of music in their worship in the early church. And I'll tell you, it wasn't because there was a direct command from God to stop or to cease using musical instruments. That command never came from God. So if man stopped using musical instruments, it was, it was because man chose to on his own. Now, according to the New Testament definition of Psalms, if, uh, if the church, if the early church decided to sing a cappella only, the definition totally allows for that. It's not an either or as exclusion would have us to believe today. The, the definition actually allows the individual or the congregation to decide for themselves what they want the psalm, the instrument that goes with the psalm. They get to choose the instrument, whether it's the voice, the harp, or any other musical instrument. So once again, the word for Psalms in the Old Testament and the New Testament is the same. It is a transliterated word. It was brought from the Old Testament to the New Testament as is, without changing the meaning. So if God did not change the meaning of Psalms, there's only one other alternative, man did. Now, if you're ever challenged to show just one reason why you use musical instruments in your worship without any guilt whatsoever, now you know what Paul Harvey would say the rest of the story. This is only one argument that we, that allow music So, if you use musical instruments of, of, in your worship to the Lord, praise the Lord. Do like 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, sing with the Spirit and sing with the understanding. If you don't use musical instruments in your worship to the Lord, praise the Lord. Do like 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, Sing with the Spirit and sing with the understanding. According to Ephesians 5.19, if worship does not originate from the heart, whether regardless of the instrument that you use, whether it's the voice, the harp, or any other instrument, if it does not originate in the heart, it will be vain worship anyway. It will be worthless, empty. So today... Do not be condemned by man if you use musical instruments in your worship. Because God has not condemned you. The Bible has not condemned you. Praise the Lord. Use your musical instruments. Do not condemn those that don't use musical instruments. But don't allow those that don't use musical instruments. Praise the Lord.